Oké. Okay. Is het dan? <laughs> Oké, okay, welkom to the session on physical attacks and masking. The first part of it. There will be another session after lunch. In this session, we have uh, three talks. The first will be given by Thomas Espitu, if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, and he will talk about a simple uh, Mitaka, which is a simple paralyzable maskable variant of Falcon. And um, Thomas will introduce his co authors. So, yeah, can you? Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so, yes, yeah, this is joint work with uh, Pierre Alain Fouque, Francois Gérard, Melissa Rossi, Akira Takahashi, Mehdi Tibushi, Alexandre Wale, and Yang Kyu. Um, so, first of all, uh, let me make a brief panorama of where we are uh, in terms of lattices for the uh, NIST competition. Uh, among the finalists, uh, two uh, of them are lattice based. I mean, finalists of round three, we're still waiting for the announcement for round four, whatever. Uh, on the one hand, we have the Falcon signatures, which, which is the uh, hash and sign type signature based on the uh, entry uh, lattices. It's very compact and fast. However, by design, uh, the range of admissible parameter set is uh, very small. It's also quite hard to implement correctly, and therefore, uh, it's quite difficult to protect it uh, against side channels, at least from a masking point of view. On the other hand, we have the uh, dilithium signatures from the Crystal Suite, uh, which follow the Fiat Shamir with Abort paradigm from Lubashevsky and instantiated over uh, generic module lattices. So it has a larger bandwidth compared to Falcon, but uh, it admits a wide range of parameter sets. It's uh, easy to implement and therefore it's uh, easy to protect against such an or at least easier. Um, today I'm Glad to present to you uh, our signature proposal, Mitaka, where we try to reach the uh, best of these both uh, worlds. So we want a signature which is uh, compact and fast, uh, which enjoys this large range of possible instantiation to have a fine grain uh, security, uh, possible security levels. Uh, but we also uh, want it to be easy to implement and protect uh, so that it can be uh, deployed. And also, we want it to be uh, implementable on things point arithmetic for constrained devices. Um, so this signature is uh, based on uh, Falcon. So uh, please allow me to uh, get a bit back in time and uh, present you the quickly the rationale of Falcon. So as I said, it's a GPV type signature. And the, let's say, motto of the uh, author of Falcon were to uh, have the most compact signatures they could achieve. Uh, and if you want to do that, as it is a hash and size signature, you will have to sample uh, in your uh, base public, your base lattice. So they took the uh, best polynomial sampler we had, which is a client sampler, but since they wanted it to be efficient, uh, they implemented it as the so-called uh, fast Fourier orthogonalization sampler from uh, Duquesne Prest which is a recursive version over uh, some towers of subfields. So I'm speaking of that because this choice of sampler uh, forced them to use a very particular type of uh, rings, which are a ring of integer of power of two cyclotomic rings, and they built that upon uh, entry lattices. So, okay, it's very nice, uh, it's very fast, it's compact, everything, everyone is happy. But uh, since we're using power of two uh, conductors, if you look at what are the possible implementation on, let's say, cryptographically relevant dimension, we will have 512 and the next power of two is uh, 1024. So quite sparse, quite sparse. Moreover, this FFO sampler is uh, really nice and from a mathematical point of view, very satisfying, but it's quite complicated to implement and is therefore very, uh, complicated to mask without tremendous uh, overhead. So um, to um, discuss a bit why we change and what are the changes we made to uh, construct Mitaka, let me just uh, introduce a parameter, which will be the quality parameter uh, here we designed by okay, alpha, which is basically encoding uh, the width 
at which you are allowed to sample using whichever sampler you want. So for the case of Falcon, this uh, quality here will be something around 1.17. And since we are in a hash and sync paradigm, the quality at which you can sample drives uh, directly the uh, security against forgery. So for Falcon, you have this 1.17 parameter, which gives you something which is NIST level one compliant, like 128 bits of uh, classical security. Okay. So this uh, complexity bottleneck, as I said, was this uh, FFO sampler. So what happened if we replace the FFO sampler by something which is uh, simpler and more efficient? So it sounds like a good idea, but as usual in computer science, like there is no free lunch uh, theorem, no free lunch everywhere. So basically, okay, you take a sampler which is simpler, but it's at the cost of having a width at which you get sample, which is larger. So it means that according to this uh, quality versus security uh, curve, that your security drops. And if you just replace this uh, nice uh, FFO sampler by the hybrid sampler, and I will explain it a bit later, um, you're, you're having a huge drop in security. So basically this par parameter alpha was dropped from 117 to three, and now you're below NIST level one. So this is quite unsatisfactory. Um, so we wanted to mitigate that uh, drop and to do so, we replaced the uh, KitGen procedure of Falcon. So we improve the KitGen, so we get bases with better quality. And as it is a motto in uh, Lattice uh, algorithm, if you want to solve a problem which is hard, uh, if, you if you take a better basis, basis with shorter vector, lowest orthogonality defect, then your algorithm will run better. So in our case, with our improved key gen, we are allowed to uh, use these uh, new keys into the hybrid sampler, and we were able to get a um, quality which was better around two, and so we were able to recover uh, this uh, part of the loss of insecurity. So since we changed the sampler, we, didn't, we don't anymore have this, uh, we're not forced anymore to use this cyclotomic power of two. And now we can implement uh, the wall signature above a wider class of cyclotomic rings, in particular one with smooth conductor. This is pretty great because uh, now we have a lot of different choices in between uh, 512 and 1024. And here are just the uh, example for three smooth conductor and so we can range um, quite nicely in between the two and we can reach uh, all possible security level from NIST 1 to NIST 5. So for the uh, comparison, um, Falcon were only instantiable on the uh, top part of the, of the curve. So now we have full range of possible uh, choices. So all in all, uh, we get a signature, which is uh, simple to implement thanks to this hybrid sampler, which is efficient, uh, more efficient than Falcon, which is compact, almost as compact as the original one, uh, versatile in terms of uh, parameters, and which is maskable, and I will come to that at the end of the talk. Uh, moreover, we can actually tweak again this hybrid sampler, um, and it allows to uh, have an implementation in fixed point arithmetic, which can be uh, interesting for constrained devices. So uh, that was for the wall rationale of the uh, scheme, and for the rest of this talk, I will focus on uh, describing what is this hybrid sampler and uh, how it's important for the security, and on what we did for the improved keygen for all the other part. I, uh, let you refer to the paper. So to dive a bit into the details of um, the signatures, let me uh, make a brief recall on how you construct hash and site signatures over lattices. Okay. So uh, everything comes back to the uh, GPV framework from again, Tripaika um, Tankutanathan and to hash uh, signature, to hash a message into, uh, with this, in this, within this framework, uh, you first hash your message somewhere around uh, the, uh, somewhere inside the ambient space of your public lattice. Okay, you have a point M, it lives somewhere, fine. Then what you do is you uh, sample a Gaussian around the uh, around this uh, hash point m and you want to sample a point which is not too far for reason i will explain 
And then your signature will simply be the difference between the freshly sampled point and the hashed. Okay. Now how to verify? So first of all, of course, since I said you're sampling a short vector, uh, I mean a vector which is close to M, sorry, uh, this signature S must not be too big. Otherwise, it just could not appear. Then you also want, uh, this is like functional verification, that the difference M minus S uh, to belong to the lattice, because since you are doing Gaussian sampling in a lattice, of course you belong to the lattice. And then if these two conditions are satisfied, that's a valid signature. Okay, so now you can be like, okay, what's the relation with hard problems in uh, over lattices? So if you look at the two conditions for verification, uh, it appears that what you want to do to uh, forge a signature is just to be able to find a close point to M inside the public lattice. And close meaning by this S is too big. So what you are actually trying to solve when you are forging is a closest vector problem instance. So you want this uh, closed vector problem, a proxy VP, to be hard in your lattice. Otherwise, you could just forge. And this means that you want the uh, width at which you sample. So in this, uh, in the sorry, uh, uh, step two, to be small because if it's super wide, of course, like forging will become easy because your approximate VP will be like with huge factors. So you want to be able to small to sample sharp questions. And if you remember the uh, let lattice algorithm motto, if you want to solve this uh, hard problem of sampling sharply in your lattice, you want to have a good basis, basis with good quality, so short vectors, and uh, or um, a small thing that effect. So, uh, all in all, uh, your secret key will be a, base, a good basis of the public lattice, and the public key will just be whatever basis. So it should be hard, of course, to compute this uh, secret key from just the knowledge of public key, of course, otherwise you're uh, allowing to have a key recovery attack. And since you want a practical scheme, you want, you want your, your public key to be easy to generate from the knowledge of the secret key. Such a secret key is called a lattice trapdoor and generating trapdoors for sampling has been a very interesting challenge in the lattice community for like two decades almost. Okay, so that why, uh, this explains why we want to have this good basis, good trapdoors and uh, why we want to sample. So now like, how do we sample over uh, structured lattices? Okay. Um, so for efficient Gaussian uh, samplers, like polynomial time, uh, the uh, idea is that a lattice Gaussian sampler is a decoding algorithm, CVP solver, on which you add a randomization. So uh, two uh, well-known uh, Gaussian samplers that are known, polynomial time Gaussian samplers. One is the uh, famous babai randolph technique, uh, which is basically the following idea. If I take a point near a lattice and I write its coefficients inside this basis, the coefficients will be reals or rationals. Uh, and the lattice points will have exactly uh, integral point, integral coefficients. So what you just do is take the coefficients, run them, and then you're done. Simplest algorithm you could imagine. Um, a neat algorithm, which also exists, is uh, so-called Babai nearest plane, uh, which is a bit more tricky to, to implement, which basically uh, take lattice hyperplanes and carefully choose close enough, close enough lattice hyperplanes and recurse to uh, approximate your, uh, your solution. And I say you want randomization on the top of that. So what do you do? For instance, for Gaussian sampler, you randomize this whole integer rounding thing. So if you just do that, you will have like some little issues because your distribution will not be zero knowledge with regards to the basis. But like PyCut showed that if you do this randomization and add a tiny bit of um, convolution by some carefully chosen um, normal distribution, you have a perfectly nice zero knowledge sampler. And if you randomize this Baba nearest plane, so it means that you're randomizing the uh, hyperplane you're choosing, then you will get the uh, Klein sampler, which is the one which is a basis from the um, Falcon signature. And in between, for structured lattices, we have a lot of space. And for instance, there is the Duquesne Prest hybrid sampler, which is a trade off for modules over rings, where this uh, rounding, as I said, on randomization, uh, is now not done at the integer level, but is done at the ring level. So somehow we are doing like block uh, rounding instead of just rounding pointwise. Um, just to give you a rough idea of how these things compares. Um, so this quality is the 
relative to the alpha I showed you on the graph a bit earlier. So the PyCurt sampler, randomization of Babel Randolph, uh, will have a quality which depends on um, the largest um, uh, singular value of your input basis. So the Klein sampler, the randomization of Baba nearest plane, will have a quality which is related to the max norm of the Gram-Schmidt vectors of your basis. And the hybrid sampler, which is somehow a mixture of the two, uh, will have a quality which depends to the larger singular value of uh, some Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization at the ring level. So it's pretty coherent. Um, so the PyCurt sampler uh, is very fast and simple to implement, just like as the uh, Baba Randolph is very simple. However, it has the worst quality among the three. So lower, the worst quality means the lowest security. The client sampler has the best, best quality among the three, so the highest security, but it's slower and more involved to implement. And this in-between hybrid sampler is a good trade-off when the, uh, your ring basis, uh, when your ring, sorry, admits a good basis with nice geometrical properties and so on. So um, to fix a bit some ideas, uh, if you try to, we should take out the ring, the convolutional ring used in n true, so cyclotomic power of two. Um, you can compare more explicitly the quality you can reach. And you see that this Falcon sampler will have a quality which is uh, constant, essentially, whereas the PyCut sampler will have a quality which depends, which grows on the uh, uh, power of one fourth of the dimension. And the hybrid lies actually in between, as expected. So it's pretty, up to there, it's pretty nice. So, as I said, so since we took a sampler which has a slightly worse quality than the Falcon sampler, we need to add something to be able to recover the security loss. So we call that from the first slide. So if this is like the case of Falcon here, just replacing by the hybrid sampler makes a huge drop in security because your quality also increase. So how do we uh, improve the keygen? To understand uh, how to improve it, first let me uh, recall like what is the base key gen. So the entry lattice is constructed as follows. Uh, so if I take two elements in my uh, ring R, F and G, I construct the public element A, which is uh, the quotient G over F mod Q. Okay. Then the entry lattice will be the priority check lattice associated to A, which means I take the orthogonal to the vector A minus one or other way to say it, I take the vectors uh, uv such that ua minus v is congruent to zero mod q. Okay, so I said that the trapdoor was a short basis with good quality with regard to the sampler process. So, okay, I already know some FNGs which are presumably small, and now I want to uh, complete this FNG in some basis of the lattice. So I can do that actually, uh, because uh, this lattice, the lattice is fully determined, the entry lattice is fully determined by A or fully determined by F and J. And as such, knowing F and J allowed me to recompute some coefficient I can put here and here to have a basis. Very interestingly, this can be done uh, very efficiently by uh, applying some variant of Euclidean algorithm and using the geometry of the ring to have some efficient uh, process. What should be remarked at this point is that I said that we want a good quality with regard to the sampling process. And the quality has a nice property that it can be computed only using F and J. We don't need to complete the basis to be able to, to have an idea of the quality. So what we can do to just have a sufficiently nice basis is I sample a bunch of F and Gs and I compute the quality. So for instance, for Falcon, it would be something like that. For the hybrid sampler, it would be something like that. Um, and I will just wait until like my good event happen. Oh, suddenly, yay, I have my uh, good basis. So if you write that as uh, an algorithm, absolute code, uh, you will get something like that. You sample F and G uh, Gaussians uh, with the norm you want, to, and we want them to have, and you wait, and you do your quality check up till, uh, until you reach a good basis. So for uh, Mitaka quality, you can think that, okay, I can do exactly the same. I just replace the quality condition and I will get a nice basis. However, um, the reject and restart already happens quite often in Falcon. And if you want to reach the uh, Mitaka quality, so here, you will need a lot of uh, restart. So this is not really acceptable. 
Um, since like having like generating Gaussians and Gaussian and Gaussian all over uh, will be quite expensive, what you would like to have is to re -random, to, re to reuse the randomness. So basically we can sample a pool of random vectors and then combine them by convolution to generate a larger pool of Gaussians and then use the Galois automorphisms of the field because since everything is nice, we work in our entry lattice, we have cyclotomic fields, we have lots of free automorphisms, and you will have a free blow up of the search space. So you have a, fine, a small pool of randomness, smallish, um, then you expand it, and then you add the Galois automorphism to expand it again, so you have quite huge uh, search space, and then in this space you can find better travelers in quite reasonable time. So all in all, I said that uh, Mitaka was actually maskable. So a quick word on that. Um, so usually uh, the uh, standard security model is the a standard uh, attacking model is a T probing model in which you basically said that your attacker can probe T values uh, at the runtime. Okay. Then the uh, security uh, you want to achieve with regards to this model is a T probing security and that you basically say that uh, if the attacker can take t values, then these t intermediate variables should be independent of the secret. If they are independent of the secret, I can't recover any information on my secret, I'm happy. So um, to uh, get an implementation of Mitaka, which is t probe, t -probe secure, uh, we use arithmetic masking. So the idea is here is uh, inspired by secret sharing. So if I have a value I want to protect, let's say x, I will sample uh, t plus one values, independent, but conditioned by the fact that their sum is uh, equal to x. So that if I take t values, the attacker, if the attacker can take t values, he will just see random noise somehow. Um, then uh, actually this arithmetic masking is linear, so every linear operation done in the signing part is, uh, is nicely compatible, but the uh, multiplication can be slightly tricky, so we, uh, since it's polynomial multiplication, we work in FFT domain so that uh, we transfer the polynomial multiplication to be a pointwise multiplication. And then we use a standard multiplier. And then the interesting fact is that we can mask all this Gaussian generation process because if we use shares which are actually Gaussian, Gaussianly distributed, if you sum Gaussian shares with the right parameters, you will get a Gaussian in the output. So basically, we can use this nice stability property of Gaussians to have a masked way of masking the Gaussian generation. And to conclude with a bit of implementation results and practical things, so uh, we did some experiments on uh, non-masked uh, and non-constant time implementation, even though it uh, can be made constant time with standard uh, results in the literature. And it appears that we're using Falcon C as a reference code and also uh, using some part of it, such as the FFT. Uh, we have a scheme which is roughly two times faster than Falcon. So it's not really a surprise because if you count the uh, number of multiplication you're making in the wall sample signing algorithm, you have like half multiplication which are done. Um, so to wrap up, uh, and I will finish with that, um, we presented a variant of Falcon, which uh, uses hybrid sampler and uh, an improved key gen to have nice security properties. It's simple and efficient. It's compact, very versatile, and is uh, maskable. So I thank you for your attention. Any questions? Uh, if you don't know. Uh, yes, yes, go on. OK, if you don't mind, I have a couple of questions. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 you mentioned it was slightly larger than Falcon. How, how, how large are you compared to what Falcon does in terms of signatures? What? So, so, sorry. Uh, what? So can, can you repeat, repeat the question? Your signature size. You yes. mentioned you were somewhat bigger, but not that much. Yes. Can you uh, it's actually, how, how big you are? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so for Falcon, uh, let's say Falcon 512, the so signature size, if I remember correctly, is 666 bytes. And so if you implement Mitaka uh, on 512, okay, maybe you can see because you're on that. Okay, so for the first security, for the lowest uh, lower security parameter, we'll have something which is around 700 bytes. 
Um, and if you go up, you will have uh, the whole range. I don't remember exactly for one for 1024, but uh, yeah, it's slightly, it's let's say 15% bigger. Uh, but actually, so as uh, as future work, we uh, know how to uh, reduce the size of this uh, of the Mitaka signatures to have exactly or even below be below the size of Falcon. Thank you. Any other questions online or from the room? If not, let's thank them again. Thank you.